Yo, k Face Guy here, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about how to set your speaker levels specifically with an SPO meter. In this video, we're going to talk about how to read the screen or your dials on your SPO meter, why you need to go back and set your own SPO levels on your speakers, and so on and so forth. So, what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to set all my speakers to a designated dB reading. All my speakers need to be the same volume level, but we need to understand why that's important. So you may be thinking, hey, KPay Sky, I have calibration built into my receiver or my AV processor, and I'm pretty sure whenever I run calibration, it also sets my speaker levels and everything. So if it does that on its own, why do I need to go back and set my speaker levels by my own sum? Well, that is a great question. When you run calibration in your receiver or your AV processor, the AV processor or AV receiver is doing its best to try to get all its calculations correct based off of where you placed your mic in your listening position. So let's say you have a front left and front right speaker. Let's say the front left speaker is against the wall, but the front right speaker is in an open floor plan so it doesn't have any boundaries next to it. Well, the receiver is going to try to make both of those speakers sound the same um, like the same characteristics at the same time at your ear level. So it's trying to make your left speaker and your right speaker sound the same, and so it does a lot of processing and calibration to try to make you feel like the speakers aren't in any different environment, right? So that's what the processor is doing, and it's gonna do that for each and every one of your speakers. Now, while your AV receiver does control your speaker level, it's not going to be perfect, and it's not gonna be as accurate as a human is. So it's good to go sit back down in your listening position with an SPO meter and calibrate your own speaker levels yourself. So no matter what AV receiver or process you have nowadays, if, you're, if it's relatively new in the last 10 years or so, you probably have calibration built into your, into your system. You can go in and find your, in your setup menu, you can find speaker levels or speaker trim, and you can adjust each speaker individually. Whether that's plus or minus dB, you can change each volume level of each individual speaker. Yes, your calibration tries to do that for you, but it more so wants all your speakers to sound the same, and it may or may not get the levels right because of that. So I'm gonna show you guys how to sit down in your listening position with an SPO meter and set your levels. Now, before we proceed, I need to tell you that I am using a TopTez SPO meter that we reviewed two days ago. If you haven't seen that video, go back and watch. This is a fantastic SPO meter and it doesn't cost you very much at all. There will be a link in the description. I'm gonna use this as my tool for SPO. And you may be asking, is a phone or an app okay to calibrate? Generally, yes. But the problem with that is, is that you have to pretty much hold your phone and the microphones, there's usually a microphone on the top and the bottom and the sides. There's a lot of microphones in a phone. This one has one dedicated to listening to the whole system. So it's most accurate to use SPL meter, but if you don't have one, a phone will do okay. So in your receiver or preprocessor, find your setup menu and find where you can change your speaker level. It's gonna be called levels, speaker level, or speaker trim. You wanna find that menu, and within that menu, you're gonna see all your speakers labeled out in a list. Front left, center, front right, rear left, rear right, and so on and so forth, depending on how many speakers you have. In my home theater, I'm using a total of 11 speakers. So that's seven on the floor, and that's four in the ceiling. So I need to go back and change all my levels to make sure that I'm reading a certain dB. Now, what dB are we looking for? On our decibel meter, we want to get a reading between 75 and 80 dB. We want all our speakers to be playing 75 or 80 dB. Now, how do we know what volume to set our speakers to, our receiver to? Well, you want to set it to reference level, whatever that is on your receiver. Me, I'm using a negative dB reading, so negative 80 all the way up to zero. That's my reference level is zero. Now you may have your receiver set to not be negative value in dBs. It may be zero through 100. I highly recommend you go to your settings and switch that to read negative dB ratings, negative 80 all the way up to zero because zero is going to be our reference level. If you're not sure what reference level is, I do have a video in the description. 
So let's assume you've set your receiver to zero dB reference level. That's the volume that you want to have your test tones playing. Test tones is a pink noise that your receiver is going to emit through all your speakers. So as you're clicking on front left, center, front right, it's going to let out a pink noise. And that's what this microphone is going to measure. How loud is that pink noise? We want to sit down in our listening position and typically you want to have the mic Depending on your mic configuration, you want to have it maybe pointing up or towards the speakers. I'm going to point mine up since there are speakers behind the microphone. I'm going to point mine ear level, point it up. So find a chair, a stool, a tripod, something to place your microphone on or your phone on your seating position where you sit the most. Turn it on and we want to place it in our seat ear level and go through our pink noises. Now, what do we need to set our SPL meter to? Well, for me, I'm going to turn mine on and we want to set it to C weighting. Most SPL meters have A weight and C weight. We want to set ours to C weight because that replicates how we hear as humans. C weighted is what we want to set our SPL meter to. So set it to C weight. And if you have a dial on your SPL meter, you want to set yours to be able to read up to 80 or 90 dB, 70, 80, 90 dB, because the goal is to to measure all of our speakers until we reach 75 or 80 dB. I'm gonna do 80 dB. I like mine to be a little bit hot. So we're gonna set all my speakers to 80 dB. So we're gonna put the microphone in our listening position, go through pink noise, and we're gonna get every single speaker to read around 80 dB. All right, guys, so we have the microphone in place. You guys can see it on the secondary camera. We have the mic in position. Now, if you don't have a ton of tripod or something to stand your microphone on, it's okay to hold it. Just make sure you hold it away from your body so that you are not blocking the sound from getting to the microphone, especially with the speakers that are on the side or in the rear. Make sure that there are ear level as well if you can get it up to your ears for the most accurate you know, calibration, the most accurate speaker level testing. So I have mine set up now. It's gonna be reading my test tones. I have my remote in my hand because we are now ready to do test tones on my Anthem AVM70. Now my Anthem automatically turns the test tones to reference level, so I don't have to turn the volume up myself, but if your receiver does not start at reference level, make sure you turn up the volume to get the reference level before you start doing your measurements. So again, what we wanna do is go through each speaker in our system, front, left, center, right, so on and so forth, go through each of the levels and, and turn them up or down, depending on how far away we are from, in this case, I'm gonna do 80 decibels. Now you can do the same thing for your subwoofers. Your system will play a pink noise through your subs so that you can calibrate your subs to 80 dB or whatever you wanna do. Most people do it a little bit hot to get a little more bass. If you want a blend, a nice balance, then get everything at the same dB level. So for this video, I'm just gonna do my front three speakers, the front left, center, and front right for audio for video purposes um, to keep it shorter and because my neighbors can hear it as well so i'll do my front front speakers right now and we'll watch the, the db meter i'll turn you guys over to the anthem here so let's go to my level calibration we're going to hit test noise turn on and we're going to start with the front and left So you guys can see we're already at 80 dB on the front left. That's because I've done calibration before. So let's go to the center channel, which is a little lower to the ground. And let's see if that's reading 80 dB. Let's go to the center channel next. All right, so that was the center channel and we went and set it to 80 dBs. Now I'm actually not going to set my center channel to 80. I'm gonna set it about three dBs higher, about 83, because typically you want your center channel to be a little bit louder than everything else so that the sounds come through a little bit clearer, the voices do. So I'm gonna actually set mine to 83. So I'm gonna bump mine up just a little bit. So now that we have two of the speakers matched, let's do the right side. Make sure that both the left and right speaker are doing 80 dB. Nice. So it looks like my speakers are doing 80 dBs. That's what we want. All my speakers are reading the same decibel level despite where they are in the room. I, they are in different spots. This one has an open hallway next to it. That one has a corner next to it. So it's going to be a different characteristics, but at least they're all the same volume level. So you want to do the same thing for all the other speakers. I would do it for my Atmos speakers up top. I would do it for my surround sounds. 
and then I would move to my subwoofer. Make sure that if you're using your microphone for a subwoofer that it can detect those lower frequencies. That's the problem with a phone. When you use a phone, it probably doesn't pick up 30, 40, 50 hertz, right? It doesn't get that low. So an SPL meter is important and probably necessary to be able to set your tones for your subwoofer. So I set mine to about 80, 80, 485. I like my subs a little bit hot, um, but you can set them to blend with the rest of your system to get a seamless sound. So it's up to you in that regard. All right, guys, that's how to set your speaker levels with an SPL meter. Same concept if you're using a phone, it'll have a lot of these features built in through an app. So if you wanna use your phone, just make sure that you hold it away from your body or find something to set it on. If it comes down to subs, I wouldn't rely on your phone to calibrate your subs level because it most likely can't hear it. You may end up turning it too high to make up for the lack of reading. So I've advised getting an SPL meter like this one. This is from TopTez. There will be a link in the description. They did send this out to me for review a couple days ago, and this is a fantastic, fantastic SPL meter. It reads about 30 hertz up to 80, or excuse me, 8,000 hertz. So it's a really capable and really inexpensive SPL meter. So thank you guys so much for watching. Leave me a comment down below and let me know if you have any other tips that you use for calibrating your speaker levels. And if you haven't ever, ever calibrate your speaker levels, let me know if this was helpful for you guys. I'm very curious to know who all this helped. Um, again, link in the description. Hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already, and we will see you in the next video. Keep this guy out. Peace. You can say I lost my mind. I will keep on holding my head high. Even if the sky is falling down.